Hey there. So I was curious if you've ever done a rent to own program. I had the opportunity recently to record a presentation for a whole bunch of real estate agents uh, last week about the Divi rent to own program. And I thought I might just go ahead and share that webinar with you in case you're looking for a quick and easy way to make some money um, helping realist or helping our consumers in this crazy market we are in right now at the end of 2022 to uh, get into a home because they're either not ready, uh, their credit stinks, or they're just on the edge of wanting to buy, but they won't, they're thinking things might change and they don't wanna buy yet, but they wanna get into a house. So in this presentation, I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I'm doing it and how we got 130 some leads in just a couple of weeks and four fully qualified clients ready to rock and roll. So now Divi's going to go buy the house cash. We'll have a commission in three weeks, hopefully, and uh, we've got our clients a house. So let's check it out. I'm Patty Sampson, top producing real estate broker and creator of Engage More CRM. My passion, helping real estate pros to close more leads faster and more consistently with better drip campaigns and CRM coaching. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell right now so you never miss a new helpful lead conversion tip. No matter which CRM you use, remember, the money is in the follow-up. Well, welcome everybody. I'm so glad to be here. I am uh, sitting here in, uh, well, somewhat hot, soggy uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. But I want to thank you all for uh, taking time to join us today. And I think you're going to get a ton of information. So um, be ready to, to take some notes. If you can take screenshots, go for it. That's good for me. Um, I'm here to provide a whole ton of value. And at the end, if, if I can give any help to you, I'll give you some information on how I can help you out. And I will also provide some time if we get it to answer some questions at the end. So feel free to uh, plug in your questions. I've asked the Divi team to track the important ones, uh, meaning ones that I can answer. <laughs> and uh, I'll make sure and get to those at the end. And if I can't, I'll make sure to get back to you uh, one way or the other. So let's, let's get started a little bit. I just kind of want to tell you what I'm here for and what my plan is for you today. And that is number one is to create better follow-up strategies and content. I know how hard it is to work these Divi leads because I'm working them. And I know how hard it is to track everything and to be able to follow up with every stage of the game. Our goal is to get you more automated because the more automated you get, the more productive you're going to be. I promise you, you will. And we also obviously want you to close more Divi transactions, which is really, really key. So um, I don't know how many you're cl you've closed to date, but you know our goal is to get you to close as many as possible because you know what? This is an amazing program. And I think if we all uh, could under really understand what it can do, I'm hoping today I'll be able to show you. So just a little bit about me. I am a real estate agent. I am a real estate associate broker here in Arizona. I've been an agent for almost 18 years, 19 years now, coming up. And uh, after 17 years of being in the legal field, um, I worked thousands and thousands and thousands of internet leads. And as a result, um, I had to have something in place to automate my business. And if I didn't do it, I'm talking thousands. I would get two to 300 leads a month. And if somebody left the company, I would get their leftovers. And so there was a lot going on. It sounds exciting, but it really was a lot of work and a lot of stress. And at the height of the market, I can tell you, I opened about 10,000 doors uh, over a seven year period as a buyer's agent, mostly at the time. So yeah, and, and you're gonna really choke when you hear, when I tell you that I had to give my company 65% of everything I did. So in the Arizona market back in, back in the early 2000s, that was about 85,000 a year. <laughs> So do what I'm telling you, not what, not what I did, okay? So I learned to be a really good lead prospector and um, I also learned to automate everything I could. So that's why I'm here today. I also own a consulting business called Exposed Agent Marketing Solutions. And uh, two, almost three years ago now, we opened the doors to engage more CRM. One of the main reasons I'm here today is to help you grow. But I also want to share with you how my CRM has helped me work these Divi leads and how in just two weeks, we got almost four fully uh, fully um, approved people in just two weeks. So I wanna show you, or I wanna show you how I did it. <laughs> so that's basically it. So anyway, here we go, let's go. Um, today's outline, we're gonna talk first about stats and challenges you have right now working Divi leads. 
We have uh, then going to go into CRM strategies. So if you have a CRM, what are you doing with it? How can you set it up to make it more productive for yourself? And also um, the five-step follow-up blueprint for successfully converting leads. Hey, Finley, I want to make sure people can see me because I only see you. I, can everyone see me? I hate talking to oh, a Oh, we can wall. see it, Patty. You can see me? Okay. <laughs> uh, everybody's can't smiling. See and That's all right. I don't need to see myself. <laughs> um, so five, and then I'm going to go through my five-step follow-up blueprint of what I'm doing to successfully convert my Demi leads. And I, I've been doing the same five steps with every lead I've gotten since 2004, um, only we have seriously fine-tuned this to a uh, really great automation, as much as we can automate, uh, program. So, and then I wanna talk about how to grow your Divi, Divi business even further. So without further ado, I want also to make sure that you stick around because at the end, I'm going to give you something, a free gift that's going to help you in any part of your business. So make sure you hang out for that because I'm gonna give you the link for it. So don't leave, <laughs> don't leave or you're gonna miss it. So really quick, I would love to know a little bit about more where everyone's from. I cannot see the comments, unfortunately. Oh, I guess I can, I can't see them. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, can you type in the chat box, where are you from? Like I said, I am in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'd be curious to know if anyone else is in here from Arizona. Um, mostly we're all here from the Divi market locations, I'm pretty sure, but start filling it in and let us know because I'd love to hear where you're from. I'm assuming you're all in the United States. Oh, Georgia, Florida, DFW, Sarasota, Fort Worth, Jacksonville, lots of Florida people. I think it's because there's a lot of locations down there, right? Um, Jacksonville, Houston, all right. They're coming in, Ohio, whoop, whoop. What was that? I didn't catch what city, Texas. All right, Woo. all right. You guys are all over the place. I don't see too many of you on here on my side of the town, but that's okay. Hi <laughs> room, I'm not sure where that is. Um, anyway, it's so great that you're here. Lots of, oh, there's one there from Phoenix. Um, we're so glad you're here, by the way. I know, I love Florida, by the way. I've got like five relatives down there. So next time I come down, I'll let you guys know. Um, but thank you for, for letting us know. It's good for me. I get an idea of who I'm talking to. Um, and yes, as I said, I am an agent working Divi Leads. And I want to show you my results over the past two weeks. Well, I say the end of the two weeks. So we did a two-week Facebook ad campaign. And it was at the end of July. So, um, And then I had to take a break because we were getting overwhelmed. And in two weeks, we got 130 leads here in the Phoenix market. Now, our market is very noisy, lots of activity. For those of you in Florida, you get it. We're a vacation destination. People like to be here. It's very busy. But we got 133 leads. From that, and this is literally a screenshot, and I will tell you today that number is now 19. Um, we had 18 Divi applications in just two weeks, and we got three fully approved. I'm going to say we actually have four, but the person is still waiting to get some paperwork in there, but she's good to go. And the point I want to make to you is that even though you're getting applications denied, see, we actually are doing everything we can to help these people with credit cleanup. And when you send people through the Divi program, they're going to just kind of, I got a denial from somebody yesterday, but then we found out there was an error. So all of a sudden they're approved. So you got to keep this in mind. It's not dead until it's dead. Right? So I'm going to say you need to beat this up if you can, and I'm going to help you do that. Um, excuse me one sec. It's very dry here already, so I'll probably be drinking a lot. Um, so don't look at a dead lead as a dead lead because every lead could be a good one eventually. And if they're not ready today, they could be ready a year from now or two years from now. So I want to see how the poll works. <laughs> how we're we going to do a poll right now. So if you could tell me right now, what is your biggest challenge working the Divi leads? Again, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to see the responses, but um, if you see them, Finley, maybe you can chime in a little bit and tell yep. me what answers are coming in. I'm going to launch the poll. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. Um, so I'm actually going to vote, see what happens. Uh, let's vote. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> All right. We see them coming in. We see them coming in. What I'm seeing so far is not enough leads. We haven't seen too many leads yet. Remembering to call and communicate. No follow-up system in place. Crickets, they don't respond to me, okay? Right now, 
we're at, well, we're still getting responses. So this is pretty, pretty enlightening, right? So first of all, you want to get more leads. So what's it going to take to do that, right? Well, that's, we're going to be able to help you if you want that help. Uh, I'm surprised to see not too many leads, which makes me think people are not taking advantage of a really affordable way to get leads and then make them work. So um, looks like our, our top is not enough leads. Our last one is crickets. They don't, or our next one is crickets. They don't respond to me. Uh, manually adding leads into your CRM. Yeah, we don't want that. Oh, sorry. Too many bad credits. Yeah, that one actually is the next one. So um, very interesting. Very interesting. And yeah, you're right. There is too many bad credits, but you, it's a numbers game, you guys. You got to keep that in mind. We are going to get that. And so what I'm going to try to do is help you kind of qualify a little easier, pretty much almost automatically qualify them to some extent. So let's keep going so we can get through all this, because I think I'm going to be able to help with some of your challenges. But I'm going to, I, having worked these needs now myself, have made my own list, and I want you to see what they are. First is not enough rental needs. How did I know that, right? Too many rent to own needs and overwhelmed. To some extent, that was us, to some extent. And so with that being said, because of that, we were forced to think outside the box to figure out a better way to work it in a way that I hadn't done in any other, any other of my lead sources before. Not enough time to call or communicate with everyone. And we constantly have that problem. My, myself and my team, we're, we're juggling around trying to see who's, who's available to make a call. So that's always a challenge. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Prospects are not responding to you. Crickets, we always know that. Too many Vivi denials, bad credit, no money, or various issues out of control, right? We don't know. Sometimes we can't help them in any way. Prospects are at various stages of the process, and I'm struggling to track everyone based on various stages, which I found that to be a problem for me between what was going on on the Divi site and what we were what, what we were getting. So, and then struggling how to automate that and qualifying and the follow-up. So I did see that in your in your responses. So our focus is to try to alleviate as much of these issues as possible. So what are we doing? Well, our biggest thing that we need to understand, you guys, is that the money is in the follow-up. It's strictly in the follow-up. You know, there's no money. I could go out and spend all kinds of money on ads. It wouldn't make one bit of sense if I didn't have my follow-up in place. It really, because you know how it is. If you've ever bought leads before or ever done any kind of lead generation, People don't meet you today and start working with you tomorrow in almost every instance, um, especially these days. Your CRM is going to be the most important tool in your car trunk. So for the next few minutes, we are going to talk about our, our CRM. So what is a CRM? First of all, it stands for Customer Relationship Management Software, which is basically giving us the opportunity to do just about anything we need to do to track our business. It houses, it communicates, it tracks and manages all of our people all the information regarding what's going on with the lead. And it can also track our future prospects, current clients, past clients, sphere vendors, other agents, pretty much anybody who is in your world that you want to communicate with, even your neighbor or your entire HOA. You know, you have that ability to stay in front of these people so they never forget that you're a real estate agent. And that's our goal, right? So we, we have to remember this. So another poll, I want to know what CRM are you using? And if you're not using one, I think there's an option there to say not using one. That's cool. Um, I know not everybody does. So let's see what we got going on. Okay. We got KV Core. KV, we, and let's look at a race. KV Core. We must have a lot of EXP agents in here. KV Core, KV Core. Follow up boss, Lion Desk, Boomtown, Brivity, Chime. Perfect. No one's named Engage More, but I understand that, right? other than me, um, please type in your, in your info in the chat if you don't know, not using one, and what is a CRM? Oh, we got one of you asking, okay, that's good. Well, so yeah, you need to have a CRM. I, these are exactly what I expected to see. These are the most popular real estate CRMs out there, obviously, and so um, what you have to keep in mind is, number one, you really need to have one. What I'm going to show you today is just not going to work without it. It's just not. So we got to make sure that you've got your systems in place, okay? It's still filling in, okay? Let's go. Um, let me shut that down. Um, all right, so thank you for filling that out. So the big key about your CRM is that you, and I don't know how many of you have done this, but I know from coaching and training agents on this subject, 
is that many people will tell me I load up all my contacts in there and then I just open it up and look at it. And I don't even know who to talk to. And that's a big fat waste of time. So if you're gonna have one, we gotta make sure you're using it for all the reasons that you can use it for. But the only reason you have one is to sell more real estate. That's the bottom line, you know? And if you get lucky enough to be able to sell your database later on, you can do it because you put it all in your CRM, right? So how long are we all gonna work? Between me and you guys, I'm gonna be 60 in a few months. I don't wanna keep doing this forever. So my database, is going to be sold, right? It's going to be sold. And so that's my goal. All right. So let's get into the five step blueprint. I'm going to tell you all five steps right now. And then we're going to go into a little bit more detail about each of these steps. Okay. First thing is when you get a lead, you need to pick up the phone. All right. I get it. Not everyone wants to pick up the phone. Not everyone on the other end wants to pick up the phone. So we also can text. All right. But it's very important. You got to realize that next initial email. When somebody signs up somewhere, they signed up for something at some point, most likely, unless you met them at the store, you know, you met them at an open house, whatever, but in, you probably still need to send them something. So you need to send them something. So we're going to talk about what are you sending them in that first email. And then the other thing is, guess what the most important thing is you can send them really is property listings because that's all they care about. So whether it's going to be a buyer or it's going to be a seller you're going to send property lists. And so we're going to talk about that. And then a long-term engaging drip campaign. And long-term is not two weeks. That is short-term. Okay. So we're going to talk about what that looks like. And then of course, you're getting responses. Now it's important that you follow up, you prospect, and you track the business every single day. So this is what, I, this is my blueprint. This is what I did for the last 20 years almost. And I'm telling you, I have produced a lot of real estate, sold a lot, a ton of it and, and helped real estate agents all over the country do the same thing. Because for one, I know that the follow-up, the drip campaigns, the CRMs are the least sexiest thing in our business. We hate it. We all hate it. I know it. I listen to everybody every day of the week. It's the worst. We hate it. And so unfortunately it's a necessary evil. So we have to get this set up. But once it's set up and running, it's like a well-oiled machine. We're going to get it running. So it's going to help us in every way. So first thing, pick up the phones. Let's talk a little bit more about that. What do I mean by that? I mean, you need to understand that prospects are 20 times more likely to purchase when contacted in the first five minutes. Now, if somebody's signing up online, they're waiting most likely to hear from someone. They expect it unless they're giving you fake information, which we know that happens, right? But we also know that 89% of people prefer text to a phone call. However, don't over text, all right? Because you can turn people off really, really fast. How many of you, and you can chime in the chat and tell me, are getting texts every day from those wholesalers saying, hey, daddy, do you have any listings available? You know, I'm like, God, every day I'm hitting stop, but they're not using it. How many of you are getting that? That is over texting. We don't like it. They're not going to like it. But if you text with the right information, it's going to make a huge difference. OK, so I'm going to give you a phone script right now. What we use when we talk to our leads. OK, one second. And they gave you the number, so you should at least try it. And you're never going to know if the phone number isn't good unless you call it. Right? I get that question all the time. Daddy. I don't like calling leads and I'm not going to call them. Should I call the leads? I'm like, duh, yeah, you should. So when I call the lead, I say, hey, this is Patty with, well, I'm actually with EXP Realty. You just registered for my rent own program. I'm looking forward to helping you. Can you tell me what's your time frame for your move? Now, one of the reasons I ask this is because without knowing that, I don't know how hard to work for these people. So that's like really important, one of the first things. But it will also open up a conversation. And that's the key. You don't want to ask a question and then get a yes or no answer because then you'll be stuck, right? We don't want that. We want them to tell us what's going on on their end. Now on the text, I do it a little bit different, kind of. Hi, Earl, this is Patty with EXP Realty. Thank you for uh, inquiring about our rent home program. Please check your email. I've just sent you an email with some important details about the program. If you don't see it, check your spam because inevitably most of our email services eventually we'll end up in spam at some point. What specific questions do you have about the program right now? Now it's interesting because they know they're getting an email, 
but we always get a response to this. And whether they're saying none right now, or the next thing I usually hear is my credit sucks. I heard, you know, I'm going to show you actually some responses that I got in a time of these texts. It's, it's, you're getting everything, which you may know, but if you're not sending any text, then you're probably not getting anything because people are not probably picking up the phone. But we need to get a response. We need to start instilling trust. And this is how we do it. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Um, so when you get them on the phone, we want to make sure that we do ask them some important things. So obviously, what's your time frame for selling? And then, then you're going to ask, what was the reason you haven't been able to purchase a home today? Is you know Because you really want to get to the bottom of their issues. But at the same time, maybe they can buy a home and they don't even realize it. So hopefully you're thinking that route. Ask pertinent questions about, or ask pertinent questions explaining DIVI program requirements to qualify with a focus on getting them into a home, right? To buy as fast as possible. So every question you have is really just going to be to, you know, I'm going to offer up help to you. Please fill me in on where you're at. Usually these folks, which if you haven't talked to anybody yet, are very open to talk because they're so desperate to find a home, what many of them are. So poor credit now does not mean it's bad. Like I said, they may need credit cleanup now. So have a credit repair lender or credit person ready. I have a guy that I have built right into my drip campaign. So when I turn a campaign on for bad credit, he gets an email as well and says, here's my people. In fact, he just it literally wrote me back about five minutes before I got on, told me he just talked to my people. All I did was after I got off the phone, I made a decision to send them into the credit repair campaign and my lender got the information and I didn't even have to call them, right? So get permission, have that person call them and not the other way around, which is the other thing. If you wait for the, and this, is, this goes for all your sales, right? If you say to your clients, um, well, your people, oh, I'm gonna uh, call this lender, they're not gonna do it. You guys have your lender call them, right? That It works way better that way. Um, and then tell them what you're going to do next and then literally hang up and try to get it done as fast as you can. If, you, if you're running like crazy, make sure that you have some way to take notes so you don't forget because, you know, these people these days don't expect to get the service that you're going to provide them. They really aren't expecting it. So when you respond quickly, they're going to be very impressed. And even if, honestly, I've had people, I've responded sometimes a day later and I felt bad. And they're like, oh, thanks for responding so fast because they're not, they're not used to it, right? So the two important things you need to know is what's, what's their time frame, right? And uh, why have they able to be, been able to purchase, right? So when you know those things, you're going to have a really good handle on how hard you need to work for these people right now. That's really, really key, okay? All right. We're going to go on to step two, initial emails, sending them what they signed up to get from you. So let's talk about email stats first, because I think this is really important. Um, I pull this every year. And um, so last year's email stats, uh, on average, for the real estate industry, open rate is about 19.7, which I was actually impressed with, because normally it's in the 15 range, right? So, And then the click-through rate is when an email gets open, is there anything in there for the click on, right? And so you should always have something in an email they can click on because if your CRM can track it, this is a majorly hot buying sign for you. And if you can see it when you log in, you're gonna know, wow, I can see that, right? They're really important. So um, it's just important that you understand that these stats, this isn't very good, right? We don't do a very good job with our email and, and Unfortunately, it's because we're counting on the drip campaigns and the CRMs that we have, right? And, and our CRMs in general, have been in every single one of them, all those that you showed me, every single one, because I coach and train and do stuff in all of these CRMs and telling you their, CR, their drip campaigns stink. But one of my competitors actually is in, in town here, and they are begging me to write them content, which I'm up in the air about, because honestly, I don't know that I want to do that. <laughs> they're, my, they're my competitors, right? On the other hand, you know, I help people in everything. So what we want to do is create and send better content. And this was uh, this was from June. My Julys were actually bigger, better than this. We had about a, a 60, almost a 60% open rate. So it really is important, right? How are we doing this? What's our problems? Why aren't we getting better open rates? Because without opens, we're never going to get a response. And those clicks are really important, right? So we said our click rate, our average click rate is 
three and a half. Well, we're at seven, we're almost double that, right? So you gotta, you gotta give them some calls to action. You've got to explain to them why they need to click on something. But more importantly, you gotta give them something to click on, right? So that you can track that. All right, so our biggest email issues is getting email to the inbox, getting email open, and getting a response. Those three things, right? We, we know that. So what are our solutions? Number one is we need to avoid the spam folder. So this is a problem. It will be a problem till we're all done selling real estate um, because of the way the industry is. Our mail is going to end up in spam, not always. And there are ways to avoid it more than the other, right? Than going the other direction. There's never gonna be 100%, but at the same time you need to understand what it takes to avoid that spam folder as much as possible. I'm actually gonna give you some tips. Getting email open, right? So what are we gonna to do to that? Better subject lines, obviously. So I'm gonna talk about that here in like two seconds. Getting a response. So we need real true calls to action. And my friends, you guys, a call to, a call to action is not let me know when you're ready. That is not a call to action. A call to action is simply a question. And you should put it at the end of your emails. At, and at the end of a text, because when you do that, if you don't, they're just going to go, oh, isn't that nice? And click on to the next email. We, we have to ask a question. And if you put it plain in there, I'll tell you, I'll add four or five questions in an email because I don't know what's going to resonate with them. You know, a lot of times because I don't know the people very well yet, right? So I'm going to put questions in. So let's talk briefly about subject lines. I want you to take a look at this. Um, this is the from line. So you know when you go into your CRM and, and you sign up and you go into your profile and you put your name in there, that's where that's coming from, okay? Then your subject line over here, right? Or over there, whatever it is backwards for, to you guys. So we have subject lines now, oh my gosh. So we're on this page and I kid you not, these are exact subject lines I've taken and I've seen real estate agents send, right? And um, where in here does it say I'm a real estate agent? Now, if I'm doing a Facebook ad or I'm buying leads from Zillow, I don't care, wherever I'm getting leads from, why do I think the consumer knows that I'm a real estate agent and is going to open this up? And no wonder you're saying no one's responding to you because they cannot tell you're an agent. So every email subject line that you create has got to have something that relates to real estate. Now, what if you went into your profile, both on your email account and your CRM, and you changed up what your from line says. I'm telling you now, this is the hottest tip. Take a screenshot right now if you can, but I'm gonna give you all day long, really, because when they know you're a real estate agent, they're gonna see it in that from line, right? You don't have to put your full name in there. They don't know you from Adam most of the time if you're doing online leads. So why are you trying to, you know, promote yourself? You know, don't put your real estate brokerage on there. I don't think it's that important. I'd rather know that, let them know what I'm doing, right? Who am I? Now, when you combine it with really powerful subject lines like these over here, um, you're going to see they're, you're going to get way more opens, right? Because is aren't these a lot more enticing? And you'll notice that I also put the first name in and we can automate that through our drip campaign uh, fields. And so... Isn't it even more you know, productive to be able to catch their eye and get them talking to you? So even if they don't want you back, at least you can see they opened it, right? And so that's the key. And you wanna be able to see that if you've got a good CRM for it. Now, this is the exact screenshot of what it would look like inside of a mail. Now, isn't this much more, go look at your mail right now. And this is what I suggest, not now, but after here, don't miss anything because you'll miss a lot, right? So um, go look in your email. And right now, go through and see if you can remember who these people are. At some point, people sign up for things. I know I do. Then I go back and I can't remember them from Adam a year later, or even a month later at my age anymore. But so who are these people? And if, if I don't see who they are in the, in the from line, and these are supposed to be like top marketers too, because I sign up for a lot of marketing stuff, which cracks me up. But this is like the biggest tip I can possibly give you for getting better open rates. And so when you get better open rates, you'll probably get more response, right? And then when you add a question in there, it'll make it even better. So you want to do this. You've got the front line subject line preview, right? So let's make sure we're focusing better on this stuff, okay? Uh, so as a, as a result, I am going to give you my free gift. I'm going to give you tips to avoid the spam folder. I'm going to give you the secrets to writing effective subject lines. And you are going to get a list of my favorite subject lines that work. And I test these out because I'm telling you, I've written 
part of me being a paralegal for uh, however long it was, a, a long time ago, I was able to write, type 100 words a minute. So what was, and you can probably tell by the way I talk to, I can talk 100%. So I can take what's going on here and get it down here, right? So what, what this is happening is that my conversational, conversational tone helps along the way because all I'm doing is typing what's coming into my head at that moment when I'm trying to respond to somebody. And it makes it easy because I can type fast. But so these are really key. So stick around because I'm still, I'm gonna give these to you, okay? All right, so that initial email. You want to thank them for however you got their info. So that's the first thing. The next thing is, be sure you send them what they asked for. This is a problem for me. I hear this all the time where agents will come to me and say, I started a drip campaign and I turned on a drip campaign in my CRM because it was there. And then they said, I had to turn it off because I realized I wasn't sending what they signed up for and they were getting mad. I'm like, buddy, yeah, of course. The first email needs to provide something. So in this case, we're doing the art, uh, the the Divi leads, right? If you're offering something about it, then you need to send something for them to click on about the program, right? So that they're getting more information, whatever it is. So make sure you're sending it uh, uh, something in the email, and then remember the clicks to your website. If you can send them to your site, like we're doing, is going to mean a lot because it will actually help you organically. So you do want that. I'm a big fan of resending the lead magnet in my first email. So whatever it is, even if they signed up for it on a form and they got redirected and went over there and, clicked and walked, looked at it, do you think they really, I mean, how many times did you sign up at three in the morning and go, I'll look at it tomorrow, right? They're not looking at it. So you better send it back out, right? So that's what you need to do. Make sure that that initial email does these three major things, right? Put a link in there and then make sure you ask a question. Like I said, ask a question, okay? We want, and even if they don't, because they click away, at least you have a chance of getting a response. Otherwise, they're just going to look at what you're sending and again say, "Oh, that's so nice of them," and then move on. We, you know, we don't need that. So, what we do is we put a link in there to a website that we've created, and literally, I you know, it's, you know I can say this is easy for me because this is what I do every day. But I went into GoDaddy one day when we started the program and created this website, literally, and like two hours. And I grabbed a lot of the content off of the Divi marketing stuff. So I made sure I had it right. Now, what I have in here is might be different than your neck of the woods. So don't like take this verbatim. You have to make sure your qualifications make sense. One of the reasons we had to do this personally is because my brokerage told me I couldn't put all the terms in the ad. And I didn't want you to run a risk of that, which was fine. So I didn't put all the terms in the ad. So we got a lot of leads as a result of it, but we did put a few, we did tweak it a little bit just to put a little bit in to keep like the, the really sad leads coming in. But when they come in, we immediately send them here and you'll notice I have a button in the site. So they're going from our email to a website. On that website, they're going to a button and it's saying get started. So this is somewhat toward the top of the website. These are just screenshots of my first of my page. When they click on that, they head down to a, a questionnaire that I have. And I'll show you the question. I think I have the questionnaire here somewhere. So, and then the questionnaire, actually the questionnaire should have been here it is. The questionnaire is, is being sent there at the bottom of the website, there is a questionnaire. Well, guess what? This questionnaire is actually loaded in my CRM because we have landing pages. I created it and then we took it and we embedded it onto the website. So we have no integration issues. When someone fills it out, the lead dumps right into my CRM. So I don't even have to mess with it, right? So if you're not even, if you're not doing the ad or lead gen, but you're out doing posts or you're doing something along those lines, you need to have somewhere to send them. You don't want to be in there typing answers to people because you're never going to collect names. So you want to make sure you're collecting names of anybody who's asking about the program. So if you're just posting it here or there, that's great. You're doing something or you have a YouTube channel and you're talking about it, which you should do. Make sure they have somewhere to go to sign up. So these are the things that we're asking after they um, and we're also when the first email comes in, if they don't fill out that form, they're getting this with the link back to the website. So we want you to provide some details in the email. Yes, it's long, but here's my feeling about it. In fact, my business partner yesterday told me, I think that email's too long. And I said, no, it ain't. You know why? Because if they're going to take the time to read through it, right, guess what? Your leads are going to be way better. 
because you are giving them the details about what it's going to take to go through the qualifying process. And you're going to know. You notice already, I'm not sending them straight to the Divi site. I'm, I, it's not, I want to send them there, but it's confusing over there, in my opinion, only because they might get denied and they don't even know why they got denied. They're just clicking on a button because they're so excited. Right? They're not reading stuff. So really, we want them to read. And if they don't read it, then they're not filling the form out. And if they're not filling the form out, that's fine with me. That's absolutely fine with me because that means they're a lead I don't want anyway. So we honestly are focusing only on the people that are filling the lead, the forms out, because that means they're way more serious. That also means that they probably are closer to qualifying than not because they read through here and realized what it was going to take for them to actually get qualified. So I'm outlining the requirements, right? So um, you, you just set this up so it's all running automatically. So all you have to do is just share that link to wherever you're going to send them. Now, if you don't have a site or you can't build it on a site, then you can create a landing page for it and just send them to the landing page. You know, you can do that. Okay. So um, again, this is the most powerful thing that I think we did. And I am so thankful that we did. Every day we're getting filled, this form filled out. And um, are they all good? No, but we still have to call them. We still got to talk to them. But we have a better chance of talking to them because they took the time to fill this out. And, and they're obviously thinking we're a little more legit than getting scammed. The last few calls we've had, honestly, the first thing out of their mouth was, is this a scam? And uh, of course they think it is because it's too good to be true. <laughs> I mean, it just really is. So let's make sure we get this part automated, okay? Any, I don't wanna ask questions, but I'm gonna wait to the end, okay? Okay, next step, right? They filled out the form. Now we're trying to get them excited. If they don't fill out the form, we still wanna get them excited. So my recommendation, that you set them up to get property listings. And uh, because they wanna look at listings, they're gonna get, you know, they, you should. Every lead, and I don't care what kind of lead you're getting, should be getting property listings or market updates from you. So if it's a buyer, it's, uh, it's uh, property listings. If it's a seller, it's market updates. And if you can't tell where they live, then you're just gonna do something in general where you work and hope that they'll, they'll write you and tell you. But, Consistent with the average price range for those who, who would apply to this program in your area, if you're going to talk about the Divi leads, so you know, you know what the price range is in your area, what's it going to hurt to just send them everything and just get, get them excited, right? And you can do it right from your MLS. I, I would not send them to the Divi site right now if they have not responded, okay, because they're going to get confused over there. Just go to your MLS. Obviously, I would go to the website. That's what I, I go to my website and do it. Now, this is my real estate site. But send a search result page on your website. So you create a page that has the search results. In fact, if it just says, uh, you know, hot rent to own listings, right, at the top of your website page, and then you put a search result in there. And that page, you're just going to send back to them. And if you can send it over and over in your CRM like mine does, it's kind of like the MLS, not necessarily real time, but if you set it up right, it'll work great. And then you're gonna get all kinds of search engine optimization because people are, if you've got your site decent and it's not owned by somebody else, that's a whole side story. Um, you want the site to be yours, but looking at the beautiful home listings gets them excited and motivated and helps them you know, dream of being a homeowner, okay? So this is really key. This, I, this is old, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I'm still on the first page of Google, but this is an old website of mine. But this is as a result of what we did. I just set, <clears throat> we set up that Divi um, or the rent to own site uh, a few months back. So it wasn't like, wasn't like, you know, we haven't had enough time to get moving. But I literally got here on the first page of Google with one of my old websites. And um, this, this was, and I'm still there. And it's been what, seven years, you know, because what I was doing was sending that link, these links back. We were buying leads in North Phoenix and we were sending these links back, back to them over and over with three different price ranges. So I was on the first page for three different niches. I since changed my website so I don't have the activity on it like I used to have, but I'm telling you this works. It works and the, the clicks help, right? So this is <clears throat> one of my sites, but the key, what you wanna do is when you're gonna send them a list of properties, you can see I've got like a little blog post. On the back end, I've added like search engine optimization stuff, you know, and then I make sure that when we create the search that it's sorted, for the most recent listings popping to the top. So every time they see the same link over and over again, they're gonna see the most recent listings, not the most expensive ones. We don't want that because it's gonna scare them off. 
Uh, so you guys fix it, you set it up how you want, but you can do it on the back end of your site or just go on the front end of your site and run a search, grab the URL that as a result, make sure that you sort it because the URL will probably change and then grab that sort in the way that, you, that I said and put that in your email links when you wanna send out the listing. Send them, I don't put, you know, I want the search engine optimization. And so why aren't I sending through the MLS? Well, number one, it's time consuming. Number two, uh, I this is all automated. And number three, I want them to come to the site. When you know how many leads close out, if you had internet leads, just, I didn't put this, this slide in here. I usually do when I present this, but average leads, if you had a hundred, you might close three of those. And that's if you have some sort of follow-up in place. It's not, not good follow-up, but you might close three out of a hundred. Most agents will close one out of a hundred. So then you go, well, why am I doing this? Well, because I got a hundred leads and only spent a hundred dollars. Add it up, <laughs> you know? So you gotta, you gotta figure out what's gonna make sense for you. So in my drip campaign, I'm able to build a campaign that will actually restart. And uh, I don't know of any other CRM. My desk used to do, but I don't think they're doing it anymore. So I just send out the same table or template over and over again, it just restarts. And you can restart it for as often as you think you need to. In my case, I'll send it out every three days if it's a new buyer I have because I want them to see the listings, right? And they're gonna click. And those clicks are hot buying signs, right? It all, it all rolls around, works that way. So you just have to keep in mind, I'm just gonna scoot down to the bottom. Well, first of all, why would people be um, following up with their prospects? Partly because they get overwhelmed, they get lost, they forget, you know? But the bottom line is, is that, you're not going to convert somebody in just one conversation. And, you know, you just have to realize you got to stay in front of them over and over and over again. Right. All right. So now we got to keep moving because I'm going to run out of time. here. Um, our next thing is, is our long term drip campaign. Now, yes, I am known in the industry. Some of you may even know me <clears throat> uh, as the drip campaign queen around here. I show up in, because I, number one, it, I'll be the first to admit I'm lazy. I'm real lazy. And so I don't want to have to reinvent a wheel. Every lead is the same to me until they start talking to me. So if, I, if I'm doing an ad, they're going to all get the same thing. So I'm going to set up something that's going to automate, right? And it's not just for one week. Um, so <clears throat> you must have a CRM or mailing tool in order for this to work. So for the one person who doesn't know what one is, or those of you who aren't using one, I really highly recommend you use it. And, you know, what's the difference between that and a mailing tool like MailChimp? You can't track everything in there. So I, I personally like using my CRM or a CRM because you know, we can then go in and take notes and make sure that we're not losing track and we can send them through a sales process, just so much. And uh, you know, just standard mail tool just doesn't do all that. So, so what is a drip campaign for those of you who might be asking? Automated sets of emails, text reminders that go out based on specific timelines or, or your action or actions taken by the user. So the beauty of the campaigns is that it all happens automatically. So when a lead comes in, automatically turns on, boom, it's hands-free, don't have to touch it. Using merge field codes to personalize templates automatically. So like every, every CRM has a different codes. So make sure you're not copying this screenshot because yours might be different. You have to know where to go to look for them, but they're in there most, most of the time and you can just pull in their first name automatically. So when you turn on a campaign, it'll automatically address them and it'll personalize it. So drink marketing is all about giving people the right information at the right time, the bottom line. So the big key though, is like I was mentioning early, earlier, if you're just using the standard drip campaigns that are built in your CRM, you gotta realize that these people are gonna get turned off really quick if you're not talking to them on how they got there. So you need to know that audience. How did they get there? You need to give them what they signed up to get, right? So every source and every ad and every offer or lead magnet, every squeeze landing page you have needs its own campaign. But it sounds like it's a lot of work, but it's really not because let's face it, after the first couple of times you send something out, uh, they're either a buyer or seller, or in this case, uh, you know, uh, rent to own. So all the campaigns can just easily be copied. And then you're editing just the first things that are coming out of the, the campaign. But you have to have a good, strong campaign. You need to be educating. And I think I have a list here of things you should do. But these are the kind of campaigns that I recommend everybody have in your CRM. So if you don't have these, you should have them because you need them if you're going to do it. So you need a good, strong buyer campaign and a seller, and a seller campaign. And it needs to be at least 12 months. When I say high touch. 
it needs, you need to, I'm going to say you need to send, you know, probably at least 35 or 40 pieces a year. You're going to start early. And it's easy to do though, when you think about that other campaign that I'm running, it's automatically sending in listings too. So this campaign is instilling trust. It's educating, it's doing all these things that's going to get them interested in me. But the other campaign is sending them listings and those two are running side by side. So you also have to have re-engagement campaigns, which is really key for the buyers and the sellers. You want to revive those old leads, right? Recurring listing campaigns, which is the one I just showed you. Again, I could do it in the MLS, but I get no SEO for that. And if you consider 95% of those people aren't going to work with me anyway, it's a waste of time, but they're still going to click. So all those people are still going to click. They're going to help me. They're going to help me organically get up the ranks of Google, right? So I'm, I'm all for that. Um, sphere campaign is one thing a month just to stay in touch. So I do recommend you have one of those as well. Our campaign is it runs two years and every year we're adding another year. And then the holiday campaigns. And we have five years of holiday video in our system. So you can turn that on and make sure nobody gets missed. And you can just turn it on for everybody because they're going to love it. They, you know, if they get a text twice a year from you, they're going to they're going to respond and they're going to like you for that. Um, the tenant rental campaign, which if you are doing this kind of business, important. Um, and to the rent to own, right? And the FISBO expired campaign if you're doing that. And then top of mind campaigns, because some people will tell you I'm not ready and you don't want to send them stuff like you like the lead just came in. So you want to just maybe pull some templates out of your other campaigns and make them more educational and then just check in every now and then. So, all right. So what rent to own campaigns do you need? This is a whole different discussion. That's normal, but I'm going to have a new program inquiry campaign. I'm going to have filled out my rent own, RTO is rent own, filled out my RTO questionnaire. So that's going to send them an email and a text that's going to set them up for a call right after the questionnaire is filled out. And this works really well because it automatically will text them and say, hey, thanks for filling out the form. When can we, when can we schedule a call? Hands free. And they're texting me back telling me when we can call. When we can, I had to call somebody last night at 630 when I really didn't want to, by the way. But yeah. Um, send out Divi link to apply. So we are, we have a campaign just for that when after we get off the phone, if we decide they should go to Divi, we're sending them a link. So they're getting an email and text thanking them and they're getting the link. And then applied with the Divi uh, fully approved campaign. So that's basically next steps in the process explained. So we got that. Applied with the Divi reminder campaign. So sometimes you guys know they go through the application process and don't finish. So we need to remind them every now and then. I personally do not use the reminders inside the Divi account uh, for all the same reasons I was telling you. I like my drip campaigns better. Nothing against Divi, I just like my stuff better. Um, Divi lead re-engagement campaigns. You want to bring in some old leads that you've had, want to see if they're still alive, this is a great one. So add credit before and after Divi denied. So we do try to help people clean up before we send them to Divi but they might also get denied when they get over there. So we're gonna to have to deal with that. Most of the reason we're sending a, a Divi denial campaign is because we don't know why they got denied. So I wanna find out why, because we still might be able to help them. So usually they'll respond and that's a good one. And then um, that's the same thing, Divi denied, same kind of thing. Um, just can't help them campaign. Yeah, that hard cold truth is you can't help everybody. You can't save everyone. So we just try to let them down on them, but we'll put them on a credit campaign credit repair campaign and then try to stay in touch with them and maybe send some listings every now and then. So, you know, just important stuff. So take a screenshot of this. If you want to build these in your own account, your own CRM, you need this stuff, right? Okay. Long-term, at least one year. So real quick, I'm just going to go through what I normally would do when I'm creating a campaign. I'm going to send emails every five to seven days for the first month and every one to two weeks. And then I'm going to text them, but never more than one, twice a week, maybe three times at the most, but really I don't go crazy. Um, they're going to get mad. Then they're never going to talk to you. Right. And so make sure you're sending something and then listings. So those are going, like I was saying, and then the reminders to yourself. So you can actually set up drip campaigns that will provide reminders to yourself in many of our CRMs. My campaign has all of that built in one. So I'm not having to turn on 10 different campaigns because I'm just going to let it run. And all I have to do is turn it off when I talk to them, right? Or they tell me to stop. Okay. So any, any questions? Well, I'm going to say, I always want to say questions because I'm a teacher at heart here. So I'll get to you in a minute. All right. I'm going to let you just take a screenshot of this, but there's a ton of tips when you're writing your own templates. I think the biggest thing 
is where you're getting your content. And I and if you're looking for links, then um, I think my, my tip to you is going to be go to your um, association, go to NAR. There are a ton of um, resources there. Just make sure wherever you're sending them, there's not other real estate agents, that's all. So I like to go and send stuff from my um, Arizona Buyer Advisory. There's a ton of links in there, a ton. So I like to go there and do that and I can just pull them and send them along just to give them education, right? Um, obviously you can have video, which I think is really, 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 really key right now. If we had more time, I would do video in every single email if I could, but and our, our system will email automatically inside of it too, which is nice. We don't need third party software for that. All right, we are almost done with the blueprint and then we're gonna rock and get out of here, but follow up. So this is the fifth step, follow up. Prospect daily, track your hot business as often as you can. Okay. So one more poll, when do you think a lead is considered no good or dead? So we have a poll, hopefully then he's got it. You still there? We <laughs> put the poll up, Finley. I think he's asleep. Hello. Not asleep, Patty. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't say. <laughs> I'm, I'm only kidding. <laughs> so when do you think a lead is bad? Okay, we're getting some answers. Yeah. Okay. They're coming in. I'm glad you guys are awake. I haven't put you to sleep yet. Okay, so we're getting um, number, let's see, we're getting one person says when they don't respond to you in the first week. Six people says when they don't respond to you in the first month. Uh, one, two people say when they don't respond to you in the first year. And then 34 of you said never, the lead is always considered a good lead. And, when, and we have 81 of you with, in my opinion, have the right answer when they tell you to stop, right? So, I have leads coming out of the woodwork five years later. And if you stop because you think the lead stinks, you've lost that opportunity. So you've just got to realize, stay in front of them until they tell you to stop because you never know what their situation is. You can't assume anything about these folks, right? So only three reasons. When your lead literally dies, and that's kind of a joke, right? When, and you wouldn't know that anyway. When your lead tells you to stop, right? And when the lead's contact info is no good. So sometimes that happens where after a while, maybe their number goes bad or they opt out. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that happens, but your lead will either opt out. And by the way, you need to have opt out buttons in your emails. It's, it's good in many ways, but it's really required when you're sending bulk mass mail. If you don't, if you get caught without it, you could get fined and you don't want that. I mean, the, the laws right now, oh my God, the laws right now are terrible. So be careful that you're sending, don't buy lists and not get permission. That scares me. No other reasons will a lead go bad until they, just, they just basically tell you I'm dumb, right? So that's the goal, okay? If you can't identify your hottest prospect and seller prospects, your database needs cleaning up, right? So if I said to you right now, could you go in there and tell me who your hottest business is? And are they buyers or are they sellers? Could you tell me that? Because the two most important things you need to know about every single lead is what's the contact type and what's the status? Like, where are they in the sales process? Because without knowing those two things, you cannot turn a drip campaign on. You know, you don't want to turn on a, you know, a re an engagement campaign for somebody that you closed. If you can't track this stuff, you can't turn on campaigns. So I would say you need to clean your, your database up. I've told people to export, clean, and bring them back in before because it's easier on a table than to click hunt and pack, especially in a, the, CRM will remain nameless, is very slow and glitchy. Uh, it was one I, we mentioned earlier, and it's, it's, it's really annoying if you're sitting there waiting for things to happen, you know, so get it cleaned up. If you have a way to do it in a mass, you could run a search maybe for a source and you know they're all buyers, send them in and try to edit them all at once if that's possible. That's, you know, I'm, I do that. So you just gotta be careful. So we wanna make sure you know what kind of human they are. So this is what I mean. This is the contact type. Are they a buyer, seller? Are they rent to own, tenant, investor, sphere? That kind of stuff, right? What's their status? So brand new to me is somebody I've never talked to. It doesn't mean that, you know, they, that they're not looking at my stuff. It just means they didn't respond. They haven't talked to me. A prospect somebody I'm talking to, right? But not quite committed. Active somebody I'm working with. And so they're really not going to get listings from me. Or I'm sorry, get um, any kind of, you know, standard drip campaign. I'm going to get them listings. but 
I'll tell you that, I don't want the risk of them getting something that doesn't make sense because we're out showing homes to them tomorrow, right? Closed, what's their status? Closed. And you want to keep your, your contact type in the last thing they were to you, you were they a buyer or seller, closed client, because you will treat the closed buyer different than a closed seller. Think about that. What would you send a closed buyer different than a closed seller? Maybe market updates in their neck of the woods. Real simple, put it on, send it once a month. They'll never forget you. And they're going to look at it every single month. <laughs> so real easy, set it up. Um, sphere, okay. Again, what's their status? If they're sphere, you might handle them a little different. And non-client, somebody who's just simply not, you know, going to work with you or whatever. And then a dead client, okay. So I also have divvy statuses in my system. So we set these up because what we're doing is changing the status within our drip campaign. So when we know that somebody has to go in a credit repair, we're changing the status automatically, our campaign will change it. So I don't have to do anything but turn on a campaign and it will take care of everything for me. So that's the key. You don't wanna be in here trying to remember all the stuff you have to do. Change the, change the status along the way. So take a screenshot of this if you haven't done it. Have this stuff set up in your account because you wanna be able to find these folks. This is all part of being able to track what's going on. Now it might mean you're gonna to have to log into your Divi account and keep an eye on it. Well, not might, you have to log into your Divi account and keep an eye on the statuses in there. You know, when you're getting 133 leads coming through and people signing up and they're all over the place, how are you gonna know where you're at with them, right? So mining your database, you need to log in daily. The hot leads are opening and clicking. Every day you wanna add tag statuses and hotness levels for different things that are going on. I usually will do it for my conversations and a little bit about them, right? Use reminders and follow-up plans if you can, uh, basically, you know, to-dos. Um, move leads from one campaign to another if you can do it like I do, where we're able to change the status and do all that some all in one file swoop. And then turn off campaigns when you start to work with the prospects because again, you don't want, you know, weird stuff going out. Um, so if you were to look at your funnel now and see what is the hottest levels of things, our least hot thing would be opening mail. We don't really know if they're reading it. The next thing would be clicking links. If they're clicking links, wow, they actually read the letter, so maybe they're interested in what I'm sending. Now we can tell they're watching videos. Those are basically links too. So add video, that's cool, because if you can send them over to your YouTube channel and get them to subscribe, now you've got them over there too, right? And then registering, logging into your website, viewing and saving homes, all that stuff, emailing and texting you, filling out forms or scheduling visits. And then of course, if they call you, please pick up the phone if you can. I know one thing in my CRM, I make sure that I can tell it's, it's coming through my CRM. If they're dialing the number in my CRM, I tell them that on my phone, I wanna know it's from that number. Cause that way I, and my, that's my CRM number. Cause that, you know, usually we have a different number. This is another one I would suggest you take a screenshot, but don't assume anything about your leads. You know, you don't know their backstory. Just because they didn't talk to you doesn't mean they're not interested. We just don't know what their story is. Let's find out, you know, two week campaigns are not enough. Your lead gen companies are not lead converters. That's your job. So don't leave it in their hands to set up your campaigns. <laughs> Send updated listings or market updates until they tell you to stop. And then you should always try to educate because educating and offering help instills trust, right? And no bad credit denial does not always mean bad if you mentioned. And you have permission to opt in to receive communication from you stay out of legal trouble. So these are my tips to live by when you're doing this kind of stuff. All right, so growing your Divi business, this is like the big meat and potatoes part. You wanna grow it, right? So most of you don't have leads, um, then how are we gonna help you? How, how can you help yourself, right? So first of all, the Divi resources, you wanna make sure you're aware you have links on your Divi portal that you can go in and get their marketing material, right? There's a blog over there too. And there's actually one for the standard community out there too. There's a real estate one and there's one for the community. So you could actually maybe send people that if you wanted to, or I don't know, you know, maybe get some ideas for writing your own. So go there and then make sure lead magnet that you have one. So let me give you some lead magnet ideas for those of you who are struggling getting leads, right? A lead magnet is basically an irresistible offer to get people to give you their contact info. And you see it all day long on Facebook as you're scrolling. Here's a free this, here's a free that, get it, get it, get it. That's exactly why my phone has been blowing up because we are getting leads from a lead magnet, all right? And so there, in fact, I had to turn the phone off because it's making so much noise. Okay, lead magnet, ideas, what can we do? Rental program deals, details, 
that picture that you're looking at right there is the ad that we're running right now. And we have, I was gonna show you, but I don't think I put the picture in here, but we have about in two days, since we started running the ad again, we're at about 45 leads, right? Right, it's a numbers game. Free informational PDF download. So you could just not have a website, but you have a download where you just go get the download, right? Rent to own this home so you could show a house. You can go find one in a price range or maybe you have one listed and say, rent this home, right? Why do we wanna do this? Because we could get a closing in three weeks <laughs> with cash, right? So that's why we wanna do this. Rent to own guide in your city. So you could create a rent to own guide or some sort of buyer guide, you know? And then video webinar or live presentation, which I think is a really good idea. Um, I'm considering doing that is just kind of creating something, maybe not necessarily to lead generate because we're doing okay with the lead generate, but to turn around and just make a connection with them with a video, which um, we've been talking about putting together. It's just getting the time, but um, it definitely, I think would help a lot so you can explain and get them qualified. The whole goal is to get them qualified, right? And then I set up this 10-step Vivi roadmap that will tell you exactly the order of things that you should be doing. You have the ad, it redirects to the website, right? And then the lead automatically dumps in your CRM. And then the 12-month drift campaign starts. And then the campaign provides a link to the site and with the questionnaire. And then when the form's filled out, it's going to another campaign that starts to schedule the call. And then based on that call, we're sending them to Divi to apply, right? Or if they can't apply or we don't think it's a good idea, we're sending them down the other, the other mostly credit repair, right? Or sorry, we can't help you campaign. And then various reminders. So I'll tell you, we don't call everybody in this program. We only call those that are filling the form out. And we're getting a lot of people filling the form out. So that's good. Um, but we're not always going to be able to help everyone. But it's just important to know that it's pretty hands off because we feel like if they're gonna take the time to help themselves, then we'll take some time to call them. I hate to say it, you know? If, and they're, they're, a lot of them are signing up on the Facebook lead form and not fully aware of what the, what the program is about. So we know when they get to the site, they're getting the information there and they may not fill it out because they know they don't qualify. And that's, how, that's perfectly fine. But we are doing it this way because we know that it's a numbers game. We need to get more people, right? More people. And so just as a reminder, 18 Divi applications, approximately 100. We spent a little bit more on that first ad because we were testing stuff out. But um, honestly, uh, I think for 100 bucks, get 130 leads, 133 leads. Uh, at least we did here in this market. And I couldn't say this would happen to you, but for $100 to get three fully approved, we're in the process of trying to get them into homes. So I mean, really, it's um, it's kind of a it's kind of a no brainer, right? Our estimated commissions, so I average, again, I'm going to say average because I don't want to assume anything about anything, but average person purchase price in Phoenix metro area for the Divi leads, keep in mind, they're not going to be, here it's 575 is the max. Most of them that we've seen are not anywhere near close to being able to qualify for that. We're really more in the kind of the mid 200s uh, and up. So I'm going to say three to 400. And let's say we get these four clothes that I have. Look at the commissions we're going to get. And, you know, we, we basically, we're filling a pipeline, right? So they may not be ready today, but, you know, what if we can get, you know, four closings a month? It's going to take some time to get there, but I mean, we're going to do it, right? So these are just screenshots of my text that I've got, people getting back. I mean, we're getting everything all over the place. But the reality is, is that all of this came back as a result of a hands-free program that we're running. It's totally hands-free. I mean, it just runs and then we go and just respond to the text. And, and oftentimes we have preset, you know, uh, texts that we are automatically replying to. So we create those responses automatically. So I don't have to, you know, go in there and reinvent a wheel sometimes. If, if they're asking all the same things, we have a text for that. You know, so you got to So now I'm going to tell you that, you know, I'm going to help you if you want to do what we're doing. I don't care where you're at, right? You, we'll help you anywhere. I've been coaching and training real estate agents all over the country for, um, I, I wanna say pretty much since I started because it's just in my nature, but officially um, for at least 10 years. And um, I am known as the follow-up queen. And really what I want you to do is to figure this out so that you're not doing this manually. What if you could close just one more sale a month? What does it look like? I mean, in our market, if an average sale is like 300, you know, 
what, I mean, this isn't that much. I don't know what your market is. Figure it out, right? You close one, just one, because you shared this with somebody, right? What's it going to do to your income? What about if you close three? What's it going to do to your income, right? So with Divi, the great thing is it's possible. You just got to get your acting gear so that you get, you get it happening for you. And you got to, you know, just step out and go do it, right? So inside of my CRM, we built, this is actually screenshots inside my CRM where my campaigns are built. So we've got all the drip, different drip campaigns that, that I mentioned earlier in here. And then this is just a screenshot of a portion of what the campaign looks like inside of our system. They're already pre-built. You don't have to do much. I mean, a little editing here and there, but they're there, right? And then on top of that, inside my CRM, I have all these other drip campaigns for all this other kind of business, which I think is important because obviously we got other stuff we're doing. And we have the holiday, I circle the holiday campaigns because I don't know anybody who's offering holiday campaigns in video let alone five years worth. So we have that, you know, I'd love to have the, give this to you, right? Plus the pre-built uh, rent to own questionnaire, right? That questionnaire that I showed you, you will have if you want to come in and get it. And it's there, it'll be pre-built for you. And if you want to embed it onto your website, that can be done too. We're going to show you how to do that or we can help you do it, one of the two. Um, now, you also have, because we do have landing pages, we have the ability to do lead gen, we have a number of pre-built real estate landing pages already created, and they can be embedded on your site, or you can just send them out. And, you know, you can do a QR code and send them to people, put them on your postcards, you know, put them in a post on YouTube or on your, uh, you know, social media, wherever, right? So you need to, every time you have uh, a, a reason to collect a name, that's what you need to do. That's lead generation. We also provide monthly newsletter content every month, which is just on the side of that plus on-demand training course. So what I'm doing, um, I'm in the process of completing this. We are in the process of completing a Divi bootcamp, basically, where I'm going to go through all the stuff that I just showed you and show you exactly how to set it up. Every right? Now, I'm going to admit, it's going to be in my CRM because it's too hard for me to build this in every other CRM. It's not that it's hard because I know how to do it. I ain't got time for that, right? And I don't see why you would want to do that when you have an opportunity to come in here and get it done pre-made for you at an amazing price, right? On top of that, you also have all of the other training you need to get up and running using all the tools inside of an Engage More CRM. So I'm going to give you that. You're, you've got it. Plus a jumpstart training course. Um, and you're also going to get a private Facebook members group strictly for um, the Divi lead program. So I have two groups for Engage More and then I have, well, I have actually more than that for this kind of business. So we're gonna have a coaching, live coaching thing that I'm gonna come in and try to do as weekly as possible for the first, you know, when you first get in here, you're gonna hear me, hear from me quite a bit. So in fact, we're rolling out the bootcamp intro on Tuesday next week. So um, at one o'clock Pacific time, right? So if you get in, we're going to have all of this ready for you and you're going to be amazed and and just like oh my god so you are also going to have an opportunity if you want to get facebook ads so where you can get the program without the ads or you can get them with the ads totally up to you i hope you get the ads because they work and my facebook team is rocking it i mean i don't do them i'll tell you i i do them but i don't do them i get so frustrated so my team does it for me <laughs> all right so in case you think I'm blowing steam up your butt, we uh, actually, I have been doing this a while and um, I have a lot of agents. Now this is previous to Divi, but a lot of agents I've helped. And the whole goal here is really the CRM setup. I wanna make sure you've got your system running like a well-oiled machine and everything's going smooth and everything else. So we have, I have created the rent to own lead conversion machine. And again, as Finley said, I don't work for Divi. I might someday, <laughs> um, but I don't right now. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that I am here to help you with this program because I'm going to give you everything that I've been doing, everything that works. And I know it works. So I'm going to go really quick. Join the Lead Conversion Machine private members group. So you're getting the members group, right? And that's value number one. You're going to come in. You're going to get all the coaching and all the support from everyone else in the group and all the tips and everything. So come into the group. Be a member of that. Access your Engage More CRM account and complete the easy jumpstart lessons to get moved in fast, right? 
So you're going to get everything I'm going to give you to get started. You have to get in and learn it. At least get your setup done. And, and then that's what you'll do in the jumpstart training. There's a lot of training there. I don't expect you to go through it all. I, not initially. <laughs> you're going to get set up enough so that you can start emailing and texting and making sure that my information isn't going out in there. Just FYI, make sure you get set up. Value three, complete your rent only conversion bootcamp. So this is going to be on-demand lessons that are going to show you how to set everything up and get it running. It's already set, it'll already be pre-built for you. There's gonna be a little bit of setup that you're gonna to have to do, but I wanna make sure you got it down, right? So I'm gonna go through that and you're gonna have on-demand lessons that you can go in at your own speed and get them done so that you can get it going, right? And then uh, I'm going to get you that questionnaire and I'm actually gonna give you two versions of it. One is just the form. The other one is going to be kind of like a website. It's going to look like a website, so you can just share it. If you don't have a site, or you don't want to mess with that part of it, go ahead and take the one we're going to give you that will look like a website. It's going to have information on it that will be very similar to the program, but you're still going to have to go in and, and I, you know, tweak it for your neck of the woods because your market's different as far as pricing goes, right? And then value five, video sessions to track, manage, and mine your database. So I'm going to explain to you now that you're getting this activity, how, when I was telling you I was turning on campaigns and this was happening and that was happening, how are you doing that? I'm just going to show you really quickly and easily what we're doing. Every time we say, someone says this, we do that. Someone says this, we do that. It's basically a one click, right? The worst part is actually, I hate to say it, talking to the people. <laughs> but it does work. It does work. Okay, that's value five. And then the special bonus is, is as long as you're in the program, any updates, and I guarantee there's going to be updates because I know there's still campaigns I need to create. So as long as you're in the program, we're going to help you get through that part too. So make sure you understand that. But here's the best part. You are going to get a free subscription to Engage More CRM if you, if you come into the program. You don't even have to pay for it. It's part of the program. So as long as you're in the program, you got a free subscription, which means not only do you get all the stuff for the Divi, but you're getting everything else to help manage the rest of your business. You know, we'll bring in all your old stale leads and re-engage them. My, my agents are getting tons of response off of those. So we'd love to have you in here. I think it's a really cool deal. And um, I'm giving you everything that I'm doing, exactly what I'm doing. And I'm going to explain it to you. You're going to go there and you're going to do this. And you're going to go there and you're going to do this. Okay. And when you add it all up, you can't even put a value on this because I don't know any place that you can go and get this many leads this fast with an opportunity to start closing deals. So if you're someone who's relatively new to real estate, or maybe you've just been floundering with the market change, I think right now it's really the best time to be marketing rent to own needs because so many people are in limbo. They don't really know what to do. And figure all those people that could not get a rental last year and the year before still having a hard time, but at least now they're starting to look because they kind of gave up. You know, they all moved into apartments because they gave up. Well, now they're out. They're like, hey, you know what? And they're going to get their, they're going to get their school money back. And maybe they want to go now get into a house. They're going to get that, right? I don't know what's going to happen, but geez, come on. Um, you can't even put a dollar figure on what this could be to you, right? I couldn't even do it. 